ibuprofen can actually elevate the blood pressure. So this is something that's super important to realize that whether an individual has not been diagnosed with hypertension or if an individual has been diagnosed with hypertension, that they st it still can raise their blood pressure either way. Now it also has been shown besides that, it also has been shown that it can actually affect the anti-hypertensive drugs, their efficiency um, or their effectiveness, except for calcium channel blockers. Well, the higher the dose of a, the ibuprofen, the more likely that it will affect the blood pressure. Ibuprofen increases the risk for a GI bleed. Now, ibuprofen can disrupt and reduce the production of prostaglandins within the stomach. Prostaglandins provide protection against mucosal damage, specifically in the stomach. With these changes, this increases the risk for a gastric ulcer, or basically, aka, a hole in the stomach. It's, it makes it much easier to develop. Now, signs of a GI bleed include seeing black tarry stools, uh, coffee ground stools, dizziness, uh, low hemoglobin, those are all things that are maybe signs or symptoms of AGI bleed. Now let's go over a nursing scenario to make this more realistic. A patient comes in the ER with unexplained dizziness and shortness of breath. Their vital signs are heart rate 110, blood pressure 95, temp 98.4, respiration 22, and oxygen 91%. They state that they have been having dark tardy stools for the last week. They have also been feeling very weak and fatigued. Labs are drawn, IV fluids are started, and 2 liters of nasal cannula oxygen is started. They do feel some moderate amount of improvement after these interventions. However, the ER doctor decides to go ahead and get an occult stool and also give Britonic's IV. As a GI bleed is highly suspected. When labs are turned, the hemoglobin is at 6.5. Their previous hemoglobin from 4 months ago was at 12.7. The rest of their labs, including the renal function, are normal. They do not have any chronic conditions that they can remember. Their med list includes Zyrtec 10 mg, ibuprofen 600 mg as needed, and Flonase daily. The patient admits to taking more ibuprofen recently because of increased back pain. The ibuprofen is then discontinued by the ER doctor, the GI doctor has been consulted, and Bertonic's drip has been started. Now this is a very realistic scenario. Hopefully this makes sense and kind of puts it all together. I wanted to make sure to do this so that makes sense and we'll do that in a few other examples. Info tip number three. Now this kind of goes along with the previous tip and this is one that most people know but you take a problem with food. This basically helps to avoid the stomach upset that often happens when you take ibuprofen. So just remember to tell your patients that they should take any kind of inset with food. Another quick fact, ibuprofen should not be taken if you have kidney disease. Individuals who have kidney disease or who are at risk to develop kidney disease should not take ibuprofen. Um, NSAIDs can actually worsen renal function. This is important to recognize, especially when you're doing a med reconciliation, if you're a nurse or if you're a provider who is looking at, you know, talking with a patient and they have renal failure all of a sudden, looking at their med list and trying to determine if there's any specific med that may be contributing. Now, even if the NSAID is not the exact reason for the kidney failure, it can definitely set that kidney failure kind of tip it over the edge. And so we want to make sure to be catching things that could potentially make it worse. Now let's go on to a scenario. Let's read this scenario here. Your patient's labs and their home meds. You see that they're on ibuprofen and that their GFR is 38, creatinine 2.3, and bun is 34. Re you review the patient's previous labs from two months ago. Their GFR was 62, creatinine 1.2, bun 21. You call the on-call provider to notify them of this. The ibuprofen is held. The ibuprofen may not be the only cause for the renal failure. However, it can definitely be contributing um, to the renal failure. So this is important because this actually requires you as the nurse to know a few things and things. First of all, it requires you to be able to recognize these labs very quickly or at least have an idea of what the normals are. Most hospital lab reports will give highlight ab abnormals in red, but I have seen some systems where that's just not the case. 
The other thing is that you have an idea that the ibuprofen may be contributing to the kidney failure. Even if it's not the main cause, you need to be able to recognize that this patient is in kidney failure. Um, a lot of times what I like to do is if they someone does have renal function that is abnormal, I like to go to previous labs and I always check to see where they've been running. Either way, they probably should not be on an NSAID if that's the case, if they have renal failure, but it's just good to get a baseline reference. So when you're calling the on-call provider, you're aware of this. Myocardial infarction risk. Now, ibuprofen and most NSAIDs can actually increase your risk for a heart attack. A lot of people are surprised to hear this. In 2005, the FDA warned that basically NSAIDs can increase your risk to have a heart attack. It also increases your risk to have a stroke as well. Now, a heart attack can happen fairly quickly, even when starting, even if you're not on NSAIDs for very long. So even if you're only using it for short-term use, um, if you, it could even happen within a span of two weeks to three weeks or so. Uh, so, um, you know, the biggest thing is to take into consideration if the individual has a uh, history of myocardial infarction or cardiovascular disease or history of strokes. Obviously, these people you would want to avoid NSAIDs in because that increases their risk even more to end up developing one of these two things. There are some NSAIDs that are considered safer, some studies have shown, but there's still the jury's still out on that. Um, for, for instance, naproxen is actually considered, well, per the studies, safer than diclofenac and ibuprofen. At least that's what some, things are, some studies are showing now. This may be confusing to some people though, because aspirin is also an NSAID, uh, but it does not have the same risk. It actually is given to prevent things like stroke and heart attack. So let's go ahead and move on to a patient scenario. Your patient is having a headache. They are in the hospital for chest pain that is likely due to a non STEMI. You do not see any PRN medications on their EMR for headache or pain. Your patient tells you that ibuprofen is the only thing that works for them. You call the on-call provider to request the ibuprofen. The provider tells you, after reviewing and asking some questions, that they will not order any NSAIDs, as this can increase the risk for a heart attack. They decide to order acetaminophen instead. So let's talk about this. This is actually something when I used to be on call that I was quite, I, I, this happened quite a bit actually. And so a lot of times the, the two things that main things you need to know here, whether you're a provider or a nurse on the floor calling for this patient is that number one, that NSAIDs first of all can make um, increase your risk for stroke and heart attack. And then number two, also knowing what the NSAIDs are. A lot of people do not know the different kinds of NSAIDs. They just a lot of times will correlate things like naproxen or ibuprofen, but they don't think of anything else. So here is a list for you of some of the more common, some are not. These are some of the NSAIDs that you should be aware of. Well, this concludes this video on what you need to know about ibuprofen. Please go ahead and subscribe to our channel and also hit the like button. This helps us know that you like this kind of video and you want us to make more of these types of videos. Thank you so much for watching. We appreciate you so much and until next time.